Hey friends, Michael Butler here talking about Sound of Freedom. I, I want to talk about this movie. I went to see it Sunday and I got to say, if you haven't seen it yet, wow, it's beating everything at the box office. It's done over $100 million and that is an indication. They've tried to suppress this film. Uh, Disney had this film. They sold it five years ago. It was complete five years ago. And I'm just sitting here in my office today drinking my greens. And I want to talk a little bit about this movie, Sound of Freedom. Did you see Taken? It came out about 12 or 15 years ago. Taken was a powerful movie starring Liam Neeson. And, um, you know, it's about human trafficking, but it was pretty fictionalized. It was not as believable as Sound of Freedom. Sound of Freedom, I think the reason it's so impactful, it's based on a true story. It's based on Tim Ballard, the founder, the former uh, Homeland Security officer and founder of Operation Underground that has rescued uh, tens of thousands of kids in Colombia, Central South America, and all over the world in the last 15, 20 years. And it's really his story played by Jim Caviezel, award-winning actor, Passion of the Christ, Count of Monte Cristo. I'm telling you, incredible filming, incredible locations, incredible shoots. Um, the children in this movie, it's its between a friendship of a brother and a sister. It's a brother and sister. And uh, there's there's a couple pivotal points of the movie where Jim Caviezel, Tim Ballard says, God's children are not for sale. And there's another point in the movie where, um, you know, the funding from Department of Home Land Security is pulling back. They're not approving the budgets uh, to rescue the kids out of the country in Colombia. And uh, he asked his boss for one more mission. And uh, as, because the little boy that got rescued, the little seven-year-old boy that got rescued, Teddy, said, will you go find my sister? And uh, he goes and attempts to find the sister in Colombia. And having been to Colombia, uh, I run a book publishing company, uh, Beyond Publishing, uh, gone to Bogota, uh, the set of the rescue is between Medellin and Cartagena, uh, Colombia. Colombia is a beautiful country, but you know, it's known for its drug trafficking. It's known for its human trafficking. It's known for good coffee. But I tell you this, this problem, this epidemic, which five to 6 million Americans and Canadians are trafficked every year of all ages, uh, boys and girls, young and old, Traffic for forced labor, traffic for sex, and then organ harvesting of babies. I mean, Underground Railroad has filmed, you can go to their website and go to their YouTube channel and see where they go in to, um, to brothels and uh, production facilities in Africa where they're literally harvesting baby organs and they're um, impregnating 13, 14, 15 year old girls um, that are being trafficked on a nightly basis, uh, 12, 15 guys a night. And once they get pregnant, you know, and, and deliver, then the, the newborns, organs are harvested. This is a multi-billion dollar a year criminal activity globally. There's 23 to 26 million um, people that are trafficked globally, according to the United Nations, according to the numbers, according to the trafficking in humans report, uh, the statistical data from Department of Homeland Security, from the United Nations, and from the um, um, the all, all the NGOs and the uh, government organizations and the countries, including the U.S. government, that keep the stats on this. The stats are this on this are staggering. It's growing exponentially, and nobody's talking about it. Since the movie Taken, um, there was a spike. We were helping raise funds for Stop Child Trafficking Now. Back then in 2010, we did a press release and a... Um, and a uh, press event. We did a media event in Tulsa, Oklahoma in 2011. In January, January 11th, human trafficking awareness. I may link to the video here because all the media came out, CBS, ABC, NBC, they all came out. And um, we made a huge impact. We had former trafficking victims there. We had best-selling author there of her book uh, that we published, More Than Rice. And uh, the media ate it up. We had... Uh, Oath there, Oklahomans Against Trafficking Humans, Stop Child Trafficking Now, which is now the Demand Project, Jason and Karen Weiss, who uh, run a safe house in Grand Lake, Oklahoma, doing a remarkable job recovering, rehabilitating, and helping these girls that have been trafficked, helping them put their lives back together. And that's what we're so passionate about at 1040 Impact. We were doing Christmas in July. We've rescued 375 kids, primarily girls, 
over the last six years in Asia, specifically in Pakistan. So um, you're going to be hearing more about that. And Christmas in July is every Christmas, we gift these girls a, a box of goodies. They get a new pair of clothes, a new pair of shoes, a book or a Bible, uh, some candy, uh, a book to read, a toy to play with, depending on their age, because the girls that we rescue and care for are between ages six and 17. And they have some phenomenal stories, just phenomenal stories that will break your heart, but will light your fire because um, when the U.S. pulled out of Afghanistan, and I'll do a whole video on that. When the U.S. pulled out of Afghanistan, it was a terrible, terrible um, mistake the way it was handled. There was so much loss of life. Uh, not only the 13 that were killed, the 13 servicemen and women, they were killed from the U.S., from the suicide bomber on that day at the um, at the gate. It, it was just awful. It was it was terrible. So many of those mistakes could have been avoided. But the parents, uh, the Afghan parents were so desperate to protect their daughters because they knew what the Taliban, they had seen what the Taliban had done to their country and in their country. And they were they were fearful. So they were selling their daughters to known sex traffickers, knowing it would be better in Pakistan um, in a brothel than to be repeatedly raped and brutalized by the Taliban in front of their eyes. So it's hard to imagine as a parent how desperate you have to be to sell your daughter for one hundred or two hundred dollars or for fifty dollars. But um, the beautiful thing is we were able to rescue fifty four of those girls and add them to our four safe houses in Pakistan. Uh, we now daily care for 375 kids, primarily girls ages six to 17. And I tell you, we've got them the trauma care they needed. We got them the, the medical and the, the nutrition, the care that they needed. They're in a safe, loving family environment with their friends and our full-time staff of 25 there in Pakistan. So you're really helping us making a difference at 1040impact.org. And our Christmas in July, uh, we're raising funds in July. We're close to our goal, but we need your help. Go to givebutter.com forward slash 1040. This will help us care for these girls for an entire year. And in the month of July, your gifts are tripled. My company, Beyond Publishing, is tripling and matching. If you give $10, that's well, 10 times three, that's $30. If you give $100, that's $300. And if you give $400, that's $1,200. And $400 helps us rescue a girl and care for her, educate, clothe, feed, provide, and house her for a full year. So thank you very much. I want to know your thoughts on Sound of Freedom. We just published a book called I Walk Through Fire to Get Here by Megan uh, Connor. Uh, you can search for that on YouTube. I'll post the link in the uh, in the description. She was trafficked from her own bedroom in the United States as a teenager. She would sneak out at night and she was trafficked. She was duped. And these groomers, and I'll do a whole video on grooming, what happens on the internet with these groomers and they're chatting with these girls. They're grooming them. Uh, sometimes girls at 18 and 19 will get a fake ID, go to a bar, meet a guy who says he's Marine. He's, you know, off-duty Marine Corps officer. And they, you know, they've got the trouble at home, emotional instability, uh, lacking love. There's abuse at home. She's being sexually abused or or, uh, you know, mentally, emotionally, verbally abused at home. One or both parents is not home. They're out working all the time. There's alcohol or drugs in the home. And so, you know what? Um, groomers know how to speak the language. They groom a girl. She's 15, 16, 17. Uh, I mean, there, there's reports of 11, 12, 13 year olds that are going to the corner Starbucks or the corner grocery store and getting in a stranger's car because they think they're chatting with a 17, 18 year old boy. And it turns out to be a 40 year old pedophile. And uh, once a girl gets into a car of a stranger, once a boy gets into a car of a stranger, 90 Five percent of the time, it is over. You do ne you never find that kid. You never find that kid alive. You never find that kid un unmolested. You never find that kid unharmed. Ninety five percent of the time, when that child gets into the car, um, I mean, also kids with a mental emotional disorders, right? Um, that are chatting on video games. They have, if your kids have Wi Fi and the internet, if they have a smartphone and you don't have tracking software on there, if you don't know what they're looking at, and we'll do a whole video on this cybersecurity for your family. I'm telling you, my kids, when they were young, I raised my kids pre internet. 
And uh, raising your kids in the internet is tough. I mean, they're now 33, 31, uh, 29, and 27. But here they are a few years ago, and they're quite a bit older now. But this is when they were like 17, 15, 13, and 11. We didn't have the internet yet. My two oldest boys, I got them flip phones. They had flip phones so they could text their friends, but they couldn't access the internet. Um, I knew there was video game consoles that had some chatting. There was some uh, connectedness there. And there was also some, uh, there were some mishaps. There were some things that happened, not with my kids, but there were stories in the news back then 20, 25 years ago of kids getting picked up, getting stalked, getting, getting uh, molested, getting uh, kidnapped as a result of chatting on a game device um, with, with a child. And so parents, uh, beware, be cautious, be informed, um, limit your child, definitely monitor your child's online activity. There's all kinds of software, free and safe software you can install on their phone. There's no way in Hades I'm giving my 12-year-old, my 15-year-old boy or girl a phone where I'm not tracking their location, tracking what apps and software they're downloading and what sites they're visiting. You might say, oh, Michael, that's that's not privacy. Hey, listen, when, when somebody is out to kill, steal, and destroy from your child, when somebody is out to brainwash your child, to tell them to get a sex change at the age of 12 because they're really a girl, they're really a boy born in a girl's body, that is a lie from the pit of hell, and you don't need to put up with that. So uh, a lot of things we're going to be covering. And the reason I'm doing these videos, on Sunday, I'm walking out of the movie theater here in Texas, and I just do a quick little 90-second video review of Sound of Freedom. And I post it, you know, I do a lot of videos. I've got about a thousand videos up as a book publisher in publishing with a TV show and guests I interview and authors all over the world, authors in 59 nations, having spoken in 39 and 30 nations myself and running our nonprofit in Asia. Um, there, there's a lot of videos up on my channel, but I notice, you know, they normally get 50 or hundred views a week, each new video. But I notice when I put up Sound of Freedom, immediately in two days, 48 hours, got nearly 2,000. By the time you watch this, it may have two or three or four or 5,000 views in just two days. And so I realized people want to talk about it. And the mainstream media is suppressing this. Rolling Stone has come out against it and said dads that take their kids to this movie have brain worms. Well, I got to say, Rolling Stone, screw you. Who cares what you think? Nobody reads your stupid magazine. You guys are has-beens. I can't remember the last time somebody quoted Rolling Stone. Rolling Stone is trying to be relevant in a 2023 era when kids are getting taken from their parents in California, sex change, getting their boobs cut off, getting their penises uh, transformed into vaginas. We've got a problem, people. And Rolling Stone's going to preach to us about what we should be watching on TV. Get real. Rolling Stone is not a media outlet. Rolling Stone is the scum of the earth. So there you go. Take that, Rolling Stone. Nobody gives a rat's behind what you think. So we're going to go out and see Sound of Freedom. I want to know what you think about it. And I also want to know this. I told my mom, my mom's 76. I said, you know, mom, it's a good movie. I know you would love it. It's very moving, but it's got some language in there for you and dad and dad's 80. And I'm like, you know, they don't enjoy a movie that they wouldn't enjoy the same type. I'm not into horror movies. I'm not into violent movies. I don't normally watch rated R movies. I'm glad this is not rated R. Uh, there's a little bit of language, like it's PG, but it's it's just the weight of the reality of what's going on in our world, in our culture. And I would say be sensitive. If my kids were 13, 14, I would take them, but I wouldn't take a 10-year-old. Um, I don't know, but maybe you do. Discuss it with the other parent and discuss it, discuss it with your child, but I wouldn't give a six or seven year old an option. I, I just wouldn't bring him. It, it's too, now I don't, I don't know because I haven't been a parent. I'm a parent, but my parents have, my children have been grown for 15 years. They've all, they were all 18, you know, 10 years ago. I think Jeremiah is 27 now. So it, it's been a while. So I haven't had to have these thoughts and Back when Taken came out, yeah, I would take him to see Taken. But this is a deeper level than Taken. There is a, I'll tell you what it is. It's the spiritual warfare that's going on for our children in the world. And it really shows you the true face of evil. This movie unveils the true face of evil. So I think 
kids need to know that. I mean, somebody living in a war-torn country, somebody living in Israel that's has suicides bombers around them their whole life and has to go to the Israeli Defense Forces for two years, you, you're forced to grow up quickly. So maybe in this scenario, in this new world, maybe you bring your five and six-year-old. I don't know. I just uh, know it may cause nightmares. It may cause nightmares because it's moving. It made me want to cry, and I did tear up a few times, and it's very, very touching. So pay it forward. Go see it. Buy some tickets so more people can see it. I realize the theaters aren't promoting it. I, I realize a lot of big media is trying to cancel it, but you know that's all the more reason for good people. All it takes for evil to triumph is for good people to do nothing, and so do something. Go see it. Create awareness. Um, do your own YouTube review. Link to me. Tag me in it. Uh, comment on this video right now. Comment. Subscribe to me. Like the video. Share it. Share it out on your social media. Follow what we're doing at 1040 Impact and GiveButter.com um, forward slash 1040 to be a part of Christmas in July. And uh, we're going to help kids all over the world. We're going to change this. We're going to turn it around because this is the this is the calling of our time. And I will tell you one thing. This movie, it will change you. Either you'll be like some people on the left I've seen on CNN and whatnot ridicule this movie. And oh, I'm not going to go see it. The abuse of children. Why would I? I don't get off on the abuse of children. You freaking idiot. Nobody's asking you to do that. We're asking you to become aware and open your blind eyes. <sighs> Release the flight logs of Lolita Express and Pato Island with Je Jeffrey Epstein. That's what we want. We want truth in America. We want the truth. And it seems like the powers that be, uh, the traditional media, the old guard mainstream media is trying to control those flight logs. They're trying to control what you can watch. They're trying to control what you can think because if they can control what you know and what you think and the knowledge you consume and withhold information from you, you'll be like, oh, that's not a problem. That was a problem back in the 1500s. That's not a problem. Now, listen, it's the big problem. It's epidemic proportions. And it's so pervasive in our foster care system. It's so pervasive in our legal system. It's so pervasive in our religious systems. Um, it's, it's scary. It's downright scary. So do something. Let me know what you think. Tag me, tag me when you go live, share me, comment. I want to know when you post your video. Thanks for watching Michael D. Butler, 1040 impact. Let's change the world one child at a time.